Yay! Yay! Here's a neat little problem. Uh, it's almost like a toy model of a guitar string. Um, this thing pops up in several different um, uh, areas of physics. Uh, so it's good to sort of see how this works out. Um, so maybe a really simple model of something like a guitar string is you've got some mass M and then there are some almost like a, a rubber bands here on each side, here and here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this mass up um, and then I'm going to let it go, right? So when the mass is up here, when it's displaced a little bit, I got tensions on the mass. And what we're going to say is that there's an equal amount of tension this way, equal amount of tension that way. So the X components of the tension are going to cancel. And all I'm going to have left are the Y components. So the TY sum to, what are the forces pulling the thing down? Um, the forces pulling the thing down is just going to be uh, two. There's two of them, right? And they're both pulling down in the same amount. So it's just going to be two times uh, T Y oops two T. What is that Y component? It's just going to be T times sine theta, right? It's the opposite to that theta. So it's just going to be two sine theta, two T sine theta. Now here's the approximation that we make in physics all the time. We're going to see this pop up again and again. Um, the angle is small. What that means, I mean, think about a guitar string. When you pluck it up, when you pull it up a little bit, um, that angle really is pretty tiny, right? We're not displacing it very much. So if that angle is small, here's something that we can do. And this is really, really useful approximation. Um, so if the angle is small, that means, what is tangent theta? What is tangent theta? That is sine or cosine, right? No problem. Um, but what is cosine of a small angle? If you just, in your calculator, if you plug in a whole bunch of little tiny angles, what you find out is that the cosine of the angle is basically one all the time. The cosine always just goes to one. It's close to one. So tangent theta is approximately equal to sine theta. Oops. That's the approximation that's really useful because the tangent, what's the tangent of that angle here? The tangent of that angle uh, is just going to be y over l. Right? And this is going to be approximately equal to the sine of the angle. Basically, what we're saying is that the hypotenuse is pretty much equal to that lower leg, is really what it comes down to, which is pretty much true. So that sine theta is y over l. So here's what I'm saying. So the total amount of force down, the force in the y direction, um, let me just, I'll take the magnitude of it because when it's above equilibrium, the force is pointed down. And then when it's below equilibrium, the force is pointed up, right? You can kind of make a movie of it in your head. It's a restoring force. Uh, if I pluck the thing up, it's going to want to come back down to equilibrium and then it'll overshoot equilibrium and then that tension is going to pull it back up again, right? So this really is a restoring force. So that restoring force uh, is just going to be 2t sine theta, but that's just going to be 2t uh, y over l. There we go. That's our restoring force. That's what's trying to get this thing back to equilibrium. Okay. Um, so I know this, this is our restoring force, uh, our spring force. You can kind of think about it as if there was a spring there. Um, and so this is going to be equal to, and again, it depends on what side of equilibrium you're on. So I'll just take the magnitude of it. This is going to be equal to uh, some sort of spring constant K times the displacement uh, Y, right? So let's find out what our effective spring constant is because it's from that that we're going to figure out how fast this thing is going to vibrate right we get the frequencies so k times our displacement is just 2ty over l y is cancel so 
k, our sort of effective spring constant is 2t over l. Um, but we also know what k is in, uh, in terms of frequency, right? Omega squared is k over m. So that means k, uh, k is m omega squared. So m omega squared is equal to 2t over l. And one thing I might want to be interested in is, what is the frequency of these oscillations? Um, just in hertz, right? Um, usually when we measure things, we usually measure things in f in, in, in hertz, sort of regular frequency. Uh, and uh, omega is 2 pi f, right? So I'll plug that in. So I get m times 4 pi f squared is equal to 2t over l. So if I want to know the frequency of oscillations of this thing, uh, it looks like the frequency is going to be, uh, what, 2t? I'm going to divide by a 4, right? So the 2 is going to cancel. Uh, I'm just going to have a t over, um, this is going to be, what, 2 pi m l. There we go. So that's going to be our frequency of oscillations of this thing. Um, oh, I keep forgetting my squared. There's my, should be pi squared uh, whenever I square the, uh, square the omega. Uh, okay, so if that's going to be my frequency, let's just put in some numbers. Let's just see what this is. Suppose these are rubber bands or something. Um, I think, uh, let's see, what numbers uh, did I use? Let's say we have just a little, like, a ping pong ball. So mass is, like, 10 grams. That's a heavy ping pong ball. I don't know what ping pong balls are. Okay, so, t I don't know, they're 2 grams. Uh, this is, anyway, this is a 10-gram object. Um, let's say L is 10 centimeters. This is something you might actually, you know, that you could actually uh, build. And if it's out of rubber band, sort of a uh, an average rubber band tension, Maybe it's a five centimeter rubber band. You stretch it to 10 centimeters so that the tension is something like one and a half newtons. I don't know, something like that. Um, so let's put that in there. Let's see. If you put these in there, what you're going to get is that the frequency of oscillations is 8.7 hertz. Neat. So this thing is just going to uh, just sort of wiggle up and down um, 8.7 times a second. Cool. Uh, so this is an example that pops up uh, quite a bit in physics, where you have something under the influence of some kind of restoring force, and then what we want to do is find out how quickly the thing oscillates. So the recipe always is you want to find the K, you want to find sort of the effective spring constant, if, just imagining that it's a spring. And then if you know that and the mass of the object, then you got it. You can solve for your frequency.